we will be going back in time and watching the tectonic movements of the last 200 million years. We will not be applying subduction, rotation of continental plates, reducing, enlarging, sinking, or rising of plates, and only such turning rotation as is justified by magnetic striping, like the rotation of Spain, Great Britain, and Central America. This Earth globe will reduce in size to accommodate the reductions of all the oceanic plates as clearly indicated by the rainbow map of the United States Geological Survey. This being the case, it would be impossible for these upper continental plates to fit together perfectly, and yet they fit together perfectly. We invite close scrutiny. Yes, there has been some erosion, landslides, and such, but the overall result is insignificant. We have been asked to believe that the continental plates drift about willy-nilly, bumping and crashing into each other like bumper cars in a carnival. This does not happen. Continental plates never collide. They only move apart, ever. In actual fact, they don't really move at all. The rifts of the lower oceanic plates move apart as the Earth fills and grows. Do the upper tectonic plates match perfectly in the Pacific as well as the Atlantic? Yes. Do plants and trees match across the North Pole in type and kind? Yes. Why is this obvious conclusion not considered by the geological community? Perhaps it is because the ramifications are so staggering to all scientists across all the areas of science. The outer two and a half miles thick of crust of an early earth, though slowly stretching, was all one piece, until the rate of growth grew too fast for the brittle crust, and 180 million years ago it began to profoundly crack and spread deep over the entire planet. We are now going forward in time to show how the actual growth of the earth took place. Antarctica, 200 million years ago, was subtropical. Africa, rising up on a smaller globe, was originally way down under the globe. In fact, for 100 million years, Africa was the South Pole. South America's tail went under and wrapped around the bottom of Africa, then incredibly joined coasts with Antarctica. 65 million years ago and more, these continents were joined and monotremes, like the duckbill platypus, roamed from Australia, Antarctica, and across southern South America, and up into Africa, the platypus. Dinosaurs roamed all over this world on the upper tectonic plate because there were no oceans, just shallow seas. Here today, Antarctica is frozen over, and Australia and surrounding islands are the remaining home of monotremes and marsupials. Do you see how broadly the Pacific Ocean is opening as compared to the Atlantic? This is exactly why the knee-jerk Pangaea theory exists. The Pacific spread is too difficult to visualize because it's so big. The Atlantic spread is so obvious that a child can recognize it. But they are the same. On this small planet were the shallow seas that covered two-thirds of the continental plates and have since completely drained off into the newly rifted open deep oceans. These shallow seas on the continental plates hold every scrap of evidence ever discovered of ancient sea life of the earth. Those shallow seas are completely gone now, completely drained off into the new rifted open deep oceans lowering the actual sea level by half a mile. Is this possible? The oceans have absolutely nothing to do with tectonic spreading, except that they cool the thickening mantle. Tectonic spreading, even according to the most conservative scientists, has created two-thirds of the Earth's surface in the last 200 million years, and therefore the same the same must be true on all planets. Now I'm going to run the Atlantic and Pacific without rotating the planet, honestly. There's no tricks here. I did nothing while the other side was turned away. Please examine this carefully. The outer, upper tectonic plates, the land fits together like a pulled apart puzzle. No exceptions. There is simply no doubt of any sort that these land masses fit perfectly on a smaller planet 
All our natural history tells us this. No ancient oceans existed. Now drained shallow seas hold the only undersea history that exists on Earth. Antarctica was subtropical. There were no frozen poles before 60 million years ago. If Earth was always the size it is today, we've got a problem because two-thirds of the upper tectonic plate is missing. If subduction existed, and it doesn't, it simply cannot and does not explain anything at all. The evidence is overwhelming. It simply needed collecting and demonstrating. The Earth grew. No Pangaea, no Godswana, Laurasia, or Tethys Sea. No meteorite knocked off the dinosaurs, no vacuum in space, no Big Bang. If what you see before your eyes, right here, is true, the emperor has no clothes and everything, everything in science, must change.